Alright everybody, I want to welcome you back to Lost Odyssey, it's Chocolate Milk, and we're going to be switching to another team. In the last video, we left off with Cook and Mac on the Frozen Trail, and god, the, the music in this video, just like the beginning of it, when you get this scene in the game, is just so beautiful. It gives such a nice atmosphere to the all the chaos that's going around you have children that are stuck in, in the wilderness freezing to death you've got aura being just burned you've got kaim and sarah we have no idea where they are and you've got seth who just rescued her son and jansen and ming are the only two that really are not in any danger right now and at this part of the game i really hate to interrupt the beautiful music but at this part of the game, they really focus on relationships. And I'm kind of glad that they didn't do this really, really super early in the game. They kind of let you get a feel for all the characters and their past and things like that. But if you notice, they, they split Cook and Mac up, who are brother and sister, and they're looking for Kaim and Sarah, who are their grandparents. Uh, they put Kaim and Sarah, Sarah together because they're married. They put. Jansen and Ming together because they obviously have a little thing thing going on and they left Seth alone to go look for her son and uh, yeah this is this is really mushy as you'll see in a minute but it was kind of a nice place to put this in in the game because it just makes you focus just totally focus away from all the chaos And, and you get that nice, peaceful, beautiful kind of thing that Lost Odyssey is with its graphics and just the atmosphere and things. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. I dreamed you were singing. At least I thought I was dreaming. Were you really singing? No, yeah, I, it's not something I do in front of people normally. What? And would you look at that? Her eyes nice. color changed. Color if you notice like... before, her eyes were purple. What's going on? And Ming actually has like I green have... eyes. You mean your memories? Which nice. is a turning point. Also in Protecting Ming's life as well. Energy. Ming's story in her past have released the seal upon my memories as, well. as you'll see in a minute here I don't want to I don't want to spoil too much but this is another reason that it was good they put this in the game right now because they haven't really focused a lot on Ming and Ming's memories all, I did see love it's really been memories. focused around Kaim and recently Seth because of her son you remember that's that's great What's wrong? Are you upset about something that happened? Huh? And she somehow really unsealed her own memories because she she actually she sealed them away on her own. Painful. Just from being a really As powerful powerless. sorceress. I think it's my duty. Which would to regain which would pretty memories. much guarantee that you would never duty. regain your memories because you would never remember that you sealed off your own memories. Because it's just like, like who would do that? That's so ridiculous, kind of thing. Involvement with other people than I. He has seen much more of life than death. The weight of a thousand years. But Ming's fairly Can optimistic about painful. her memories, whereas you know, like Jansen was saying, Kaim's really pessimistic I about want it. To look back carefully. At all of those years. Uh, wow, a thousand years. Ming seems to want to reflect really on long. all the time that she spent on bad. Earth. You know, have everything change except for yourself. That would be hard. Mm. You are incredible. And I kind of. To live a thousand. I think I've said it a few times, but. I can't even imagine. I, you know. I like Ming. I kind of, I kind of respect her in a way. She kind of has a very good, um, rounded personality. Uh, 
This was and uh, all there was. She just seems very wise not fit for a queen, and but polite, uh, you know, well, being that she is a queen. Thank you. Shall we eat? The flirtatious thing really isn't okay. the best quality about her, but you know, it, it, it adds to the story. I don't think it would be nearly as funny if she blew Jansen off, whereas she as generally plays I along with him. Know who I am. Thanks to you. Well, yeah, you know, I did what I had to do there. I just kind of sat there and uh, you basically protected me. Yeah, that's, that's really embarrassing, actually. Jansen's being nonchalant as always. Oh, they are just... I, I don't know what they are. I don't know if they're cute together or if they're funny. I don't know. They are just a match made in heaven, in my opinion. It's nice to see that someone in this game isn't in complete danger, though. But I guess Seth wasn't really in danger until she put herself in danger. Ming's dreaming now, and this is she, she, this is basically going to highlight about what happened when she lost her memory. Now you'll see those creatures roaming around, and in the beginning of the game we watched a scene where she was gazing upon a stone statue, and it, it hurt her because it was in her memories, and these are these creatures that were turned to stone. Well, so just in case you, you, you weren't aware... All of your precious subjects shall now the Arthrosaurus were the creatures that were ruining her city until they got turned to stone. Everything they have built, their town, culture, history, their lives, their meager happiness, all shall live. And who other than Gungor would be behind this? We would expect nothing less of him at this point. Who can stop this, Your Majesty? Me, Nomara. Do you have no compassion at all? Uh, you realize, of course, that while you stand here... Oh, even more of your people have been slaughtered. Gongora, you monster! <laughs> you and I have an eternity. But do you have time to hesitate, your majesty? One thing I noticed just kind of very randomly in this scene, I don't want to interrupt it because it's kind of important, but he's wearing the same clothes that he was wearing in the previous cutscene where he was king, but yet in the rest of the game he's been wearing his normal, like, clothes we've seen him in. So does, does Gungor just keep this outfit, like, like in his closet and well wear it whenever he feels mighty. I, I don't However, know. whether one chooses to live as a walking corpse or to throw one's life away, the end result is the same. What are you talking about? You will seal off your memories. What? Your magic energy is very powerful. Use it to hypnotize yourself. And at this point in the game, and, and, I, and I don't think it ever really it tells you. Why it is or how it was that Gongora came to have this mission to screw up all the other immortals and make them all lose their memories. And it never really highlights why it is that he wanted Ming to seal off her own memories. But she does it for the sake of her people, which is, you know, I kind of admire her for that too. She. She's definitely not selfish, I don't think, at all. And then as you can see, there's the stone, the stone Arthrosaurus. Again, like I mentioned there earlier. Your Majesty, please, we must hurry. Who are you? And why do you dress me as your majesty? Because you are the queen of Numara. I am? That's the story of how that happened. And it, 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 I think it's nice to kind of see that. Because I think Ming is kind of underrated in this game. She's just seen as the, the queen figurehead. And the focus is always on Kaim and, and Seth a lot of the time. For my people. So, 
I really enjoyed this part of the game. And now we actually get to go to some gameplay, so that's even better. We get some cool cutscenes and background, and we also get some gameplay, so... You can rest here if you'd like, and before you leave you want to knock over the grate and save as well. This is another area that we will not be able to visit again, so make sure you grab that chest and you grab all the other stuff that's going to be coming up as well. It up. Let's go look for Kaim and the others. Alright, so you can get into random encounters in this area. And remember that Ming is an immortal, Jensen's immortal, so this is a really good time to focus on skill links between the two, since it's just them. And I would switch Ming to the front. Or you can have them both in the back, but then you'd have no guard condition. I'm putting her in the front, obviously, because I have the level 50 immortal. I'm just going to change her equipment before I leave. Before I forget that. And then we're going to just pick up some chests and crap like we've been doing. But this area is kind of cool. I don't know. I like it in a way. It's it's spooky, but yet it's it's beautiful and I don't know. I like really weird things. I'm just a strange person, I guess. You can get, like I said, you can get into random encounters. They're not hard at all. The two of you should be able to handle it. You know, you have two, both of them using their black magic. When one gets weak, use white magic. Have the other one use black magic, etc. Pretty, uh, pretty barren area, though. And there's a little secret alcove over here that you don't want to miss. Because this chest got me in my first playthrough. I was like looking. Uh, I was like, oh, did I miss Did I miss something? And yeah, I missed that. And I was pissed off because I couldn't go back. I think that's it. That's the way out. Okay, see, so yeah, I would have missed that if I wouldn't have gone back. So you always do want to check dead ends because you never know it could be a treasure chest it could be a glowing item it could be nothing but it's best to check safe and sorry you know and now we're actually in Gosa. well how about we take another approach well what's left of Gosa? well and like I said before, that's why you were collecting stuff earlier in the city, because most of it's frozen over. You can come back, like we are now, but there's a lot of areas you're not going to be able to go back to ever again. So, we can collect some new stuff in the city of Goza as well. Now this path will lead to the exit. Before we do that, we're going to go to an area and just collect a few, few little items before we leave the city. You want to come back to the elevator and I know you're thinking we already collected all the items in the apartment building but they give you a new area called the backyard. Now this is a like a side questing kind of side thing. It's basically like a big battle stadium. At the very end of the game you can test your strength and it, it'll get you some achievements and things like that. We can't We can't be here right now obviously because we don't have all our party members. But I'm going to get the slot seat that's here now, just because I feel like it. I, I really don't want to miss things or forget about them. So there's really nothing you can do here now, but just remember the location for later. And remember to get the slot seat before you leave. And that's it for, that's it for Goza, I think. It's just that pot, the slot seat, there's a save point if you want to save. You know, but other than that, the city's pr pretty dead and pretty frozen over. Gongora really worked his magic on this place. Oh my god. So once that's done, you can go back to that exit I told you about earlier, to the east. And we can leave. Yeah, see, it's uh, n nothing over here. It's all destroyed and ruined. And that's pretty much it for me, guys. I will be seeing you in the next video where we continue on with with Team Jansen and Ming. See you later.